Hello everyone, my name is Christian. Welcome back to Tech Point. Today our guest is Adam, the founder and president at Partner Commerce. Hello, Adam. Hey, good morning. Hi, Christian. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining our, our podcast. First of all, please tell us what your company does. Ah, yes. Uh, well, first of all, thanks for having me today. It's exciting. Glad to uh, participate in this. And um, yeah, Partner Commerce is an agency. We specialize in affiliate marketing and we focus on B2B and primarily SaaS brands. So our clients are uh, Google Workspace, uh, Notion, Klaviyo, uh, Dropbox, Zendesk. We also work with TikTok for business. So we work with some non SaaS brands as well. Um, and we've built a niche really out of, out of helping B2B SaaS brands develop partner and referral marketing programs to drive acquisition. What's the biggest problem that you solve for these B2B SaaS companies? How to engage, how to discover, uh, engage, incentivize, enable partners to generate demand for your offers. Okay, and why are they looking to to generate more demand? Let, let's talk about this channel, about Growth. affiliate marketing in B2B SaaS. What's the main reason? Growth. 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 Right. So they, they want to acquire new customers. And um, what you, what we found is that paid media, it, it, it sort of saturates at a certain point. And the costs of maintaining those channels is very expensive. Like the CAC is extremely high. And the CPC or CPM, however you're paying, you know, it, it's very competitive and, it, and it's going up double, triple digits year over year. Uh, and there's a limit to how much growth you can actually get from those channels. So it's high cost <clears throat> and the costs are increasing and it's saturated. Um, so you really need to look outside of paid media to, to grow. Um, and, and partnerships are a great way to do it. I mean, something like two thirds of every dollar spent on B2B SaaS is influenced by some form of partner along that conversion path, right? So whether it's an agency or a publisher or an influencer, right? There are many different um, potential partners who are touching that customer along that journey. And there's an opportunity to engage them, reward them, incentivize them and enable them to create demand, you know, distribute your offers. So we, and what we found also is that the, the customers that, uh, are acquired through partner channels tend to be higher ticket, ha- higher average deal size, yes. uh, lower churn, higher average seat size. Um, you know, they, they and, and there are particular cohorts of partners that that you hire there. Um, so yeah, I think I think you know to to uh, oh, and the last thing I'll say is so so not only does it give you an opportunity to expand beyond you know, paid, paid media. Um, but it, it, it's also a very efficient channel, right? Cause you control the CAC. You're only paying on performance. Whereas paid media, you have to invest media dollars and there's risk with affiliate marketing. You're in theory paying, you know, on performance. And so, uh, there's less risk and you can control the CAC a bit more and, and you tend to get higher quality customers. Okay. And why should companies, uh, come to, partner commerce in order to build their program rather than doing it themselves was the, was the main pain point. So it, it's very time consuming, right? Um, you know, you really need to dedicate and, and if you're, you know, you're focused on your product and your customers, um, you really need either need to hire, I would say, you know, a, a full-time person to manage it or yes. you need to outsource that to an agency. Um, it's very hard to find a person who has, you know, we have a very large network of partners that are ready to go. We've developed those relationships over a decade of working with brands like Microsoft and Google and Notion and Clavio and TikTok. And so we have active relationships that we are maintaining because we're constantly doing deals with them on behalf of other clients. So, you know, for someone to come in, and build that network, it would take them, it took us a decade to get to where we are now. 
So I, I think if you just want to hit the ground running and be able to scale quickly, you need an agency and you need partner commerce because we're really the only agency that focuses on B2B. And mm -hmm. it, you know, there's a lot of affiliate marketing companies that focus on B2C. Yes. But those skills are not transferable to B2B in my estimation. And you can't, you know, just easily replicate the network that we've built overnight. Is affiliate marketing new in B2B? Not from my vantage point. I mean, I've been doing it now for 10. It's newer than it is for B2C, right? right. For retail, you know, e-commerce, uh, you know, consumer brands. They, affiliate marketing has been around for several decades. And um, I think for a long time, like in the early 2000s, you know, the belief was that you could not do it for B2B because businesses have longer, you know, uh, sales cycles. They're more complex sales cycles. Sometimes there's a committee of people involved in a decision. Right. Um, and, and so th th there's off offline events where you're paying on a subscription. So there's sort of deeper funnel, you know, like how do you pay upfront for B2C? You know, you could pay uh, someone drove a sale. The sale was X amount of dollars. The product is no longer returnable, so let's give a commission to the partner, and here's the commission amount. And it's a percentage of the very straightforward, uh, and the sales done online. More complex with beauty, but there's technology today that enables that and um, to solve some of those problems. And and you know we've proven that it works now, time and time again yep. with very large B two B global B two B SaaS brands. We are a global agency. We have. Uh, 25 people I'd say now and we're in uh, 11 countries uh, we speak 17 languages uh, so we can scale this you know uh, uh, quite rapidly and, and globally okay and let's take an example of a B2B SaaS company how can I as a, as a company realize I need an affiliate program is it for me how, how do you qualify exactly if you should start an affiliate program either through an agency or yourself? That's a great question. Um, well, I'll, I'll say that I think there are certain factors that are good indicators of success. Mm -hmm. So one would be how large is the TAM, right? Is this, do you have a, a very large TAM, right? Um, so obviously the, the larger the TAM, the more opportunity there is to work with, with partners, right? I would say another uh, factor would be, are you targeting a SMB audience? And when I say, I'll qualify SMB even more to say micro SMB. So this affiliate tends to skew well towards customers who are one to 10 employees. Yes. Rather than, you know, 10 to 200 employees, right? Because as you get larger, at that point, you may be working with a reseller or uh, you, you may be buying that software not through affiliate type channels, right? Um, so, so we said large TAM, uh, SMB audience. I would say also uh, that what I found is that platform products tend to perform better than uh, kind of add on products. So, uh, platform meaning like, like CRM is the type of product that, you know, you, you build around, yes. right? Where there are other pieces of software that are sort of like add ons to, but they're not core decisions. So, uh, you know, something that everybody needs, a platform product that does really well. There just tend to be natural ecosystems of partnerships around platform products. Um, I, I think there are also some, you know, I'll say non uh, um, uh, there's some factors that are not like demographic factors that are more uh, um, a, a little less tangible. So for instance, like is leadership behind this? Uh, do they understand the requirements? Like, do they understand that they need to dedicate a, a lot of companies think that affiliate marketing is something that you can just sort of turn on like a technology and there's a network and it's plug and play and it'll, you can passively manage it. And affiliates will just discover you and 
be motivated and activate on their own. And that's just not the case. Like you really need to actively invest and manage and develop these partnerships. And so I, I would say if there's a, a, and also if you, I think there's a, a mentality where, you know, some companies I think are, are, you know, product led. And um, I think to be successful in partnerships, you need to be partner led. Right. So you need to understand the partner is not just a sales channel yes. for you. Right. They have their own businesses that they're trying to grow. And so to what extent, and obviously the, the, the rev share or the commission that we're paying is, is a big motivator, but for a lot of partners, what they're really interested in is creating value for their members. And so whether that's badging or certifications or training or discounts or something that you can offer them to distribute, that's going to go a long way. And so again, going back to like embracing a partner led mentality is one of the success factors. Totally agree. And I think this is super valuable. Thank you for sharing that. Now, when talking about partners, let, let's get more specific for the audience yeah. to understand what are we referring to? Uh, resellers, mm. influencers, what are the most common partners that you see? Great, great question. So I'll think of partnerships as, you know, a big umbrella. Mm -hmm. And within partnerships, you have uh, at one end of the spectrum, you have distributors and resellers, right? So these are partners who are buying licenses from you and they are, you know, handling the, the selling, yes. the billing and the support and the implementation uh, with the customer. Right? So they're buying it wholesale and then they're reselling it. And then you have uh, on the other end of the spectrum, referral partners, right? And so these are partners that are referring traffic or potentially leads as well to you, to the brand, where you do the selling, you handle the billing, you handle the customer support. Um, so in the world of affiliate marketing, it's on that end of the spectrum, the referral end. And so now within that section of the landscape, there are diff many different cohorts, types of partners, right? So it could be a, a influencer, right? Someone with a social media presence that's a subject matter expert, either about your industry or, or maybe they're a subject matter expert in a particular industry vertical that you service. Mm -hmm. So if you provide some sort of SaaS software for HVAC companies or HVAC is one of, there are influencers like Grant Cardone who has millions of HVAC, you know, uh, uh, business owners. Um, it, so, so, you know, he's not a, a SaaS expert, but there are, so, so influencers is one, there are publishers, right? There are software review comparison type sites. There are member marketplaces. So think of banks and credit cards and co-working anywhere that it's a gated marketplace of members that, you know, have joined some uh, member group could also be an association uh, and they get perks and benefits as a, a part of being a member of that organization. Um, and then there are also agencies. And I'll, I'll describe agency in a moment, but the, the sort of common factor of all the ones I just mentioned, and there are many, many more, uh, is that they're selling one to many, mm. right? Uh, agency is a third party that has an, it could be a pure agency, like a web developer or a CRM solution provider, or maybe it's a sales pipeline consultant or a UX UI consultant, or maybe it's just a fractional CTO, fractional CMO, fractional CFO. Uh, maybe it's a business consultant of some kind, um, an accountant, a bookkeeper. I mean, there, there are many different types of agents that yes. are working for right the SaaS brands and <clears throat> they don't, they might sort of fit the profile of the type of entity that could be a reseller, but not everybody qualifies to become a reseller or wants to meet the obligations to be a reseller. And so affiliate or the agency program is kind of an in-between 
uh, where these agencies are selling one-to-one, but they don't want to handle the billing and the support of the customer. They maybe have some light service layer or level of implementation that they do, um, but they're not going to, you know, fully implement the solution and fully build a solution. And they want to just earn a referral fee. And I think that's a great, you know, that's worked really well for uh, Microsoft, for Google, and many others. Thank you. Thank you for this. Now, I'm really curious to dive into the story of the company. So basically, how did you did you start Partner Commerce? What was the idea behind it? Yeah. Uh, so I going back many lifetimes ago, I worked at a big agency uh, called WPP, big global ad agency. They own a lot of different companies. And, and I started a division within that uh, company that was doing what they called at the time alternative channels and affiliate was considered an alternative channel. Uh, we were doing other things, but affiliate was a core part of it. And then I had an opportunity to actually spin that out and start my own company. And, and we built in those years, large consumer affiliate programs. So Hilton hotels was one of the programs that I built in that. Uh, years later, uh, I then became an affiliate and, um, I worked on some B2B offers. And in that experience, I discovered that there really weren't technology platforms designed to support B2B SaaS affiliate programs. There, there were no agencies around that had the right capabilities. And I, and I knew from my agency experience and background that there's an opportunity here, right? For, and, and I could see it. I could see SaaS you know, on the rise yes. and, and, um, I knew that they would be looking for someone to help them deploy these types of programs. And so we launched partner commerce to, to meet that need. And what and was your biggest uh, challenge so far? The biggest challenge. Um, well, for a long time, it was just overcoming the perception that you can't do affiliate for B2B. Right. I think we're now you know, past that perception, we're getting RFPs from major global brands looking for affiliate marketing. Um, I, I think the, the challenge now is just scaling, you know, and, and keeping up with the demand, right. And, and finding talent and growing and, uh, maintaining the culture of the company as we grow, you know, the, the, the same sort of growing pains that any, any company has. How do customers usually find you? Is it through word of mouth? We've been very fortunate and we've done virtually no marketing. I, we've just started doing like these sorts of things where we're on podcasts and, and blogging and, and so on. So it has all been word of mouth. Uh, we've been just really investing in talent and building the best possible service and not in, you know, marketing. Uh, now we're at a point where we're a little bit bigger and we're freeing up some of my time to, to really focus on on the growth of the company and the branding of the company. But uh, yeah, fortunately, it's been all, all word of mouth. We're, we're also a unique company in that yeah. we're, we're really the only one that specializes in B2B. And so, <clears throat> and because it's there's a high barrier uh, to get into that, right? It, it, it's not a transferable skill set, and you need time to develop that network. It's it's very hard for other agencies to break into it. They've tried. A lot of agencies have tried, and then sort of thrown their hands up, and you know now they'll just refer accounts to me rather than try to figure them out because they it's easier to just focus on B two C and be great at that and let me handle the B. But um, yeah, it's word of mouth as of now. What would be your best piece of advice for someone that's looking to start their affiliate program? Uh, just do it. You got to jump in now. It's it's going to take time to, to ramp up, uh, but y- you know it, it it's it, I, there's so many and, and and also I would say you know a lot of companies think well let me pilot this on my own and then I'll come back to an agency when we sort of prove it out and get to scale. I think that you've got to sort of go large or go home. Uh, you know, you got to invest in it properly from the beginning. And, and you know, it, 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 I've seen this become the biggest and most efficient channel of acquisition 
for brands bigger than their paid media, bigger than their reseller channels. Uh, and so, yes, it's going to take some investment to kind of get it off the ground, but, uh, uh, you know, you have to do it, start doing it now because it does take some lead time. And, um, it, but, you know, every, it, it, it grows and grows and grows and eventually it becomes a engine for efficient acquisition. The great thing about partner marketing too, I'll say is that, you know, when, a partner is selling, there's, there's trust, right? And advocacy because it's a third party who's saying you should use this pro. I like this product. Yes. Uh, that's much stronger than any advertising you can do. Absolutely. I have one last question for you, Adam. Yeah. You know, so many SaaS products here in, uh, in, in this world. I'm curious if you have a favorite one that you use and would share with the, community of my own yes that i personally use yes uh we so i <laughs> it's like asking me to choose a favorite of my children you know <laughs> um yeah, so i well i'll tell you as a, as a company we've we've decided to consolidate a lot of tools right so we found that we were like using so many and and it was uh a lot to keep up with we, we started consolidating a lot within notion So Notion mm -hmm. can do a lot of different things. And um, as an agency, we want to scale our processes. And so one way to do that is by documenting things so that you know, help onboard and train new employees and, and you know, create some sort of automation. And then so we use Slack a lot as an agency to communicate and use that as a channel to communicate with our clients. So that's a, a big product for us. Uh, um, But Notion's also become like it's replacing other project management tools that we were using and uh, some task management and, and some other things that we're trying to consolidate now within that. So, uh, I, you know, we've hired a consultant to come on board and really help us. Like it's also happens to be one of our clients. We try to um, use like to, to become better at promoting our clients offers we uh, try to adopt and use them. So we are a Google workspace shop. We use Notion, you know, um, we're going to, you know, there's a couple other like SaaS tools that we represent that we're also using. So um, yeah, that would be, what about you? <laughs> What's your favorite? For me, one of the top is for sure Google workspace. I use it every single day and I love the simplicity of it. Yeah. Uh, and also Riverside, the one that uh, we're using right now. The one that we're on right now, yeah. Yes. Plus uh, the biggest one and the one that I cannot live with, it's Google Calendar. Not exactly a SaaS, oh, yeah. but part of the, of the workspace. Without Calendar, <laughs> no productivity. <Yeah. laughs> right. So yeah, thank you so much, Adam, for joining us. It was a fantastic conversation, full of value. And I'm really grateful that uh, we got this chance. I'm grateful. Thank you for having me on. It was a pleasure doing this and uh, good luck everyone with your affiliate marketing. <laughs> Thank you.